Finally! Finally, we will answer the question, how did Rusty Lake begin? Wait a minute, what is Rusty Lake? And why finally? Easy, easy here. If you've got at least one of these questions, specially for you, I've got a link in the description and the video card, leading to the first part of a deep dive into Rusty Lake. There I recap the early arc of Laura, did that on the surface level without bold statements. Long story short, the lake game is about Laura, having a trip to a resort by Rusty Lake due to her depression, about a ritual followed by a corrupted soul attack, and about Laura's chance to change her fate. Harvey's box is also about a soul attack, but on Laura's para this time, which she took to the lake with her. And seasons about Laura's death. And her own corrupted soul, willing to undo it via memories, captured in little cubes. One would think that these three games add up to a single story, but how? The strict logic is unable to say. Here we need imagination and interpretations. And I have them. There are different points of view both on Laura's death and the ending of seasons. It's way too early to give a definitive answer, a murder or suicide. In a vision we saw a corrupted soul doing the job. But can we really trust our eyes? That's a completely different question, that gave rise to many nuances during years of the series' development. Talking about the ending, some believe that Laura changed her memories only, and the others that the past was changed with them. The lake situation is even more ambiguous. Not every theorist would say that they understood the game. It's early, it's short, and it's full of convenient coincidences. And the universe, the plot, and the characters were not as developed back then. However, seemingly random things often have some kind of subtext. Maybe not affecting the story, but always raising the game's cultural value, including the early ones. And theory's job is to figure it out. I don't know exactly what the devs could put into the rituals. According to my current version, the pentagram is actually a pentacle. An occult symbol with petals representing an element each, alongside the virtues associated to them. The shell, or rather its spiral, represents development and thinking outside the box. It probably corresponds wisdom. The eye is likely the third one, knowledge that is. The coin, I'm almost sure, is wealth. Not sure about the apple though, could be power, could be death, could be something else. And the gem? The gem is in charge here, and his meaning in the pentacle is probably not that relevant. What is relevant is that blue aquamarine, according to some sources, increases occult powers, and according to the others, a green emerald protects from them. And pentagons, according to Bernice Cochran, have to represent changes and a new beginning, which corresponds to the notion of Laura changing her fate. This is not the only possible interpretation likely not even the best. I've been struggling to find an adequate source for pentacles, and this cocktail could be just a bunch of coincidences. So feel free to propose your own alternatives, dear colleagues. Sometimes the subtext can hint at what happened, but very seldom why. It's time for rationalization, attempts to explain things logically. Bear in mind that the things I say next are mere guesses hardly based on anything. Starting with the tree, it could be either just a gameplay element or something normal for that paranormal place. Or maybe it was slipped in by conspirators alongside the ritual scheme. Who? Not telling you now, but they do exist. Why? Can't say for sure, I don't always get their plans. And the lines on the scheme, dashed for the pentacle and solid for the pentagon, are likely a hint for the player. I struggle to explain why Laura went into the ritual. It doesn't look like madness. Considering her past, she could've been familiar with it, but we have no evidence supporting that. Was it curiosity? And on the contrary, stabbing the drowned was likely madness. But the soul and the tree are hardly its part. We do have evidence of Laura's mental issues. But in that case, 
we firstly stop knowing what happened, and secondly, the notion of changing the fate promoted by the devs seemingly suffers. Maybe you can figure out how Laura's fate would change in case she was tripping in both endings. Assuming the rituals were real, it's hard to define their effects. Pentagrams usually associate with summoning. Maybe Laura summoned the soul with one ritual and protected herself with the other. But we need to forget that we can assemble the pentagon right away and the soul will still arrive, as it was summoned. Maybe both do the summoning, and the blue gem amplifies the soul, while the green one repels it, all according to the unworthy sources. Speaking of souls, there are three of them in Cube Escape the Lake. The corpse, with the soul slipping inside until disturbed, a soul added in Cube Escape collection just watching through a window, and the one attacking in the end. Some may think that the Drowned and the Attacker are the same creature. Yeah, I guess it's possible that the Disturbed Dead has fully awakened and was pissed. The others may unite the Watcher with the Attacker. Or all the three are different souls. Also a possibility. I remind you that these are guesses, so feel free to share yours. In Cube Escape the Lake we don't see Harvey's box despite it definitely being there at some point in the story. Maybe it was yet to arrive. Maybe it was ignored, as it probably wouldn't have any gameplay purpose. Or maybe it's not there due to certain season's events, that I'll cover a bit later. On the other hand, the lake came out earlier, and the box may have been not a thing yet. Harvey, as said before, was also attacked by a soul, just like Laura. The only definitive timeline of these attacks is impossible to form, but it's easier to assume that the events of the lake and Harvey's box take place simultaneously, and both the protagonists were effectively attacked by the same beast. Partially because the soul leaves the cube both times when defeated. Let me know if you have other ideas. But for the time being, I'm saying that Laura assembled a pentagram, a corrupted soul arrived, and a loud noise from the box caught its attention. Now the question arises, did it happen before or after Laura's possible demise? Which one of the lake endings is canon depends on the answer. Canon in a way that is followed by the events of seasons. Version 1 – The Second Chance Let's suppose it was after. In that case, Laura didn't survive. However, the lake rolled the time back in order to give her a second chance. Something similar we saw in Harvey's box. Even the protagonist of Case 23, that happened to be in that cabin few years later, admit the same thing. The lake gives me another opportunity. So Laura takes advantage of this opportunity in the Pentagon ending. While the attack on Harvey doesn't take place in this new reality. Version 2 Changing the memory. Very similar to the previous one, Laura still dies. And not the lake bent the time flow, but Laura's ghost goes back into the memory and changes it like in seasons. Hence the title. Judging by other games, immersing into one of the cubes was enough for that. This version requires that changing memories affects the reality in one way or another. Affects the fate that is to be changed. Even the past is never dead, it's not even past, a quote of William Faulkner written on the ritual note, seemingly continues this idea. And despite Faulkner originally implying something else, the devs could have altered the meaning to fit their message. According to these two theories, the Pentagon ending is canon. However, if Harvey is attacked first, the soul gets fireflies in its face and gets lost. Laura safely returns back home, the pentagram ending is canon. But since everything's alright, why do we have the pentagon ending? And where is the fate changing, which the devs insist on? The two following versions of the lake events may answer it. The third one – a lifelong trauma. Yes, Harvey could save Laura. However, encountering a weird crap and being on the verge of death could leave a severe psychological trauma. Laura's mental health 
wasn't that great in the first place, and this near shock could bring her even closer to the supposed suicide. Hence the title A Lifelong Trauma, no matter how short that life could be. In this case, Cube Escape the Lake stands among the memories of seasons. Laura died and was hoping for memories in order to change her fate. The lake is just another stop on this journey. But in all fairness, we have a lot of uncertainties. There could be no trauma. A pet saving you from a monster may rather be a lovely surprise. Even if the trauma took place, its input into the suicide is impossible to prove. And last but not least, the suicide, as it was mentioned earlier, is debatable on its own. Besides, the trauma could be overshadowed by a different, more significant reason to alter the events of the lake. Version 4. The Missing Parrot So yeah, there could be another reason to change the memories of the cabin. Harvey for sure had her chance to save Laura during the original events. But not after, when Laura started changing her memories in seasons. Basically, after returning to spring 1964, Laura set Harvey free. Maybe so she brings her a flower in winter, or maybe just not to leave the bird on her way. Since as we know, all that you touch, you change. Maybe touching changed the reality. Maybe memories were rebuilt one by one like dominoes. This is irrelevant as long as the lake stays the part of the system. What's actually relevant is Harvey who escaped and therefore couldn't accompany Laura to the lake anymore nor save her in the moment of need. The parrot went missing and changing ritual was the only way to survive. By the way, it could be another reason why there's no box in Cube Escape the Lake. These are four versions concerning the lake. It's important to note that as he sends in versions 2, 3 and 4, changing memory, lifelong trauma and missing parrot, only if the memories in some way affect the reality. The fate has to change. The devs made it clear. If not Laura's demise in the lake, then the one in seasons. If neither that, there must be at least real consequences for her soul. Talking about seasons, their structure is rather peculiar. Laura died and we play as her ghost, traveling through the memories of her life both before death and after. In order to do that, once again, she had to enter one of her cubes, that the blueprint depicting her plan started with. And now it's time for more guesses. Inside the cube, she either didn't realize that she's in a memory, or was able to affect nothing. As a result, Initially, she acted exactly like she acted before. The egg, the shrimp, Harvey's murder, the machine construction, which is also a memory. Therefore, I think that Laura's journey started after it. Apparently, control over situation, or at least his understanding, eventually came, but relatively late. Not before Laura relived both her life and afterlife. And at that point, only the blue cube could help. It allowed to roll the time back, changing everything around Laura, but seemingly not herself. For that, she needed the machine. Even when Laura let Harvey out, planted the cactus and did everything else, she still stayed corrupted. The machine itself, built by Laura, had two purposes. One of them was communication through time. Very likely it was Laura calling her past self from winter, warning her and directing. After all, these directives stopped coming exactly in winter. Plus, we'll meet more corrupted souls speaking to us with a similar voice. For such conversation there was no need in fuel. It was necessary only for setting her changes in stone for turning the corrupted soul back into a human. These two purposes were both fulfilled with the phone. Even on the blueprint, the final stage is an arrow, coming from the phone and pointing between the egg and the shrimp. Actually, that corresponds to what we see, since we don't cancel eating Harvey's egg. 
There are also some theories for each major ending interpretation. That is, the reality did change, and the reality did not. If Laura alters the memories, but not the past itself, then version 1 – appeasement. Laura reconciles with her past, accepts it, and finally finds peace. The original meaning of Faulkner's phrase – the past isn't dead and not even past – was about the past haunting us and defining our actions. To an extent that it becomes the future, since we are doomed to repeat our mistakes time and time again. So yeah, Faulkner implied nothing mystical. A similar ending can be seen in The White Door. However, in both cases it may remind self-deception and a matrix dream, which may feel anticlimactic. This version may set a foundation for others, more well thought or more daring ones. For instance, those where appeasement is just a step towards something bigger. Version 2. Rebirth. Here it is, that something. Laura's soul finds not only peace, but also the ability to be reborn. The problem of the statement – we don't know much about reincarnation of corrupted souls. Seasons is the only game so far where someone revives the old body. Not much evidence for now, waiting for the past within. And that's why it's crucial that you propose an alternative development of the appeasement version. Now let's review the versions where the reality is actually changing. And that could be either causes or consequences to change. Version 3 – Resurrection The memories change not the past, but rather the present. Laura alters her memories, convinces herself that she is alive, and lo and behold, she lives again. A true power of self-conviction. And jokes aside, there is a philosophical school known as subjective idealism. It states that the world takes shape when conceptualized by a mind, and every single mind may have its own reality. So the result of altered memory is self-conviction removing corruption, which is another way to see the ending of the white door. And finally version 4 – Timeline Bending. And here, Laura gradually changes the chain of events that would lead to her death. Speaking metaphorically, threads a small needle of events in which she stays alive. After all, even the notes seem like shouting about changing the past. The thing is, here it's less like Laura writing them to herself and more like the deaths to us. Effectively, this is one of the few tools that lets them relay their message directly. And we need a good reason to disregard them. However, to be fair, it smells like time travel, which isn't for everyone as well. So, we have just reviewed all the theories about two games taken separately. But how would they interact? What story would they tell together? And now, I need your full attention. The topic is genuinely complex. In order to facilitate your comprehension, I'll list their titles. Try to recall the ideas behind them. Rewatch the respective extracts if needed. The links are in the video card. We have for theories of the lake events. The second chance given to Laura by the lake. Laura changing the memory in order to undo her death in the cabin. The lifelong trauma after the attack. And finally, a parrot, missing after Laura changed her memories. Seasons have four versions too. Appeasement due to self-conviction. With the rebirth in a new body and resurrection in the old one. And careful timeline bending through changing memories. Let's suppose the first version of the lake is true. The lake gives Laura a second chance, and she survives. Then, the events of seasons are not affected in any way and may develop according to all four scenarios, changing the reality or not. 
There are also two pros. Firstly, second chance can be seen in two other games taking place on the same location. And secondly, it gives nice and simple explanation on how we are meant to change Laura's fate, which is requested by the game. Yet, there's also a con. In order to keep Harvey's box canon, the theory requires further complications. Suppose the second is true. Changing memory is based on the assumption that the reality changes as well. Otherwise, Laura dies definitively, seasons don't happen, and the fate doesn't change at all. This alone contradicts the versions of appeasement and rebirth, and at the same time repeats timeline bending in its core. If combined, we get Laura dying once in the cabin and canceling it by going into a cube, dying once more at her place and canceling it again also by going into cubes. Changing memory about the cabin has a little problem with the version of resurrection in seasons. Of course, Laura could die twice and both times revive herself through self-conviction. But why did it take two years at most the first time and whole ten years the second one? Let me know if you know reasons for that. On the contrary, the lifelong trauma, the third version of the lake, works well with appeasement and both rebirth and resurrection coming from it. By some miracle, Laura survives the attack in the cabin. Harvey is the only option for now. However, after that, she was left with a mental trauma leading to her demise. Appeasement, Rebirth and Resurrection are the versions where Laura cures herself from all the traumas she ever had, including the one she's got in the cabin. Notably, Laura's fate is changed here not locally in the lake, but globally in seasons. The missing parrot option is the only left. In one way or another, works well with many versions of seasons, if not with all, unless someday the appeasement gets a contradicting continuation. So, Harvey saved Lori in the cabin, but just in two years she died anyway. In order to fix it, to find peace and be reborn, to resurrect herself or change the past for real, Laura entered her memories and started altering them. One of the earliest alterations was setting Harvey free, which happened before the trip to the lake. It doesn't matter if it was for real or she just convinced herself in doing so. Either way, within this system, Harvey shouldn't be in the cabin anymore. All that you touch, you change, which means that Laura was doomed, since her death in the cabin, both real and contrived, would directly affect her state. Even the lifelong trauma loses its relevance, while Laura's life depends on Harvey. What trauma can we talk about when you are dead? So, the only way to prevent her death is the other ritual. And considering the woman initially stepping on the same rake, one second chance from the lake could come in handy. These are all the theories on Laura's story I know. At least those staying within three first games about her. Her biography still contains a handful of things I'm yet to share. There are even those the devs themselves are yet to share. We'll return to Laura in the future and more than once. And for now, I invite you to fill in a Google form on the link in the description below and vote for theories you stick to concerning seasons and the lake. After all, it's you to decide how Rusty Lake began. I would also appreciate your answers for the following questions. What subtext could be behind the rituals in the lake? Why was Laura even bothered by said ritual? How did she manage to find all the objects necessary for it? What do the rituals do in the first place? How does Laura change her fate in case the lake is nothing but hallucinations? How would Laura and Harvey happen to be attacked by two different souls? In what way Laura's fate changes in the appeasement version? If Laura resurrects herself through self-conviction, not only in seasons but also in the lake, why did it take a different amount of time? 
leave thumbs up if you liked the video, and respectively leave them down if you didn't, and feedback is welcome. If you disagree with me on something, or have your own opinion on the reviewed games, let me know in the comment section. I also can be found on the Rusty Lake subreddit, as well as an official Rusty Lake Discord server, if you prefer a more direct communication. The links are both in the description. Here was now here, who's always glad to discuss. And remember, question everything in Rusty Lake.